feedback is a process in which information about the past or the present influences the same phenomenon in the present or future. As part of a chain of cause and effect that forms a circuit or loop, the event is said to feed back into itself. Feedback is also a synonym for feedback signal a euro the measurement of the actual level of the parameter of interest. Feedback mechanism a euro the action or means used to subsequently modify the gap. Feedback loop a euro the complete causal path that leads from the initial detection of the gap to the subsequent modification of the gap. History, self-regulating mechanisms have existed since antiquity, and the idea of feedback had started to enter economic theory in Britain by the 18th century, but it wasn't at that time recognized as a universal abstraction and so didn't have a name. The verb phrase to feed back, in the sense of returning to an earlier position in a mechanical process, was in use in the U.S. by the 1860s, and in 1909, Nobel laureate Carl Ferdinand Braun used the term feedback as a noun to refer to coupling between components of an electronic circuit. By the end of 1912, researchers using early electronic amplifiers had discovered that deliberately coupling part of the output signal back to the input circuit would boost the amplification but would also cause the audience to howl or sing. This action of feeding back of the signal from output to input gave rise to the use of the term feedback as a distinct word by 1920. There has been over the years some dispute as to the best definition of feedback. According to Ashby, mathematicians and theorists interested in the principles of feedback mechanisms prefer the definition of circularity of action, which keeps the theory simple and consistent. For those with more practical aims, feedback should be a deliberate effect via some more tangible connection. Practical experimenters object to the mathematician's definition, pointing out that this would force them to say that feedback was present in the ordinary pendulum. Between its position and its momentum a euro a feedback that, from the practical point of view, is somewhat mystical. To this the mathematician retorts that if feedback is to be considered present only when there is an actual wire or nerve to represent it, then the theory becomes chaotic and riddled with irrelevancies. Rame Prasa defines feedback generally as information about the gap between the actual level and the reference level of a system parameter that is used to alter the gap in some way. He emphasizes that the information by itself is not feedback unless translated into action. Types. Feedback is commonly divided into two types a euro usually termed positive feedback and negative feedback. The terms positive negative were first applied to feedback prior to WWII. The idea of positive feedback was already current in the 1920s with the introduction of the regenerative circuit. Free and Jensen described regeneration in a set of electronic amplifiers as a case where the feedback action is positive in contrast to negative feedback action which they mention only in passing. Harold Stephen Black's classic 1934 paper first details the use of negative feedback in electronic amplifiers. According to Black, positive feedback increases the gain of the amplifier, negative feedback reduces it. According to Mendel confusion in the terms arose shortly after this. Free and Jensen had made the same distinction Black used between positive feedback and negative feedback based not on the sign of the feedback itself but rather on its effect on the amplifier a euro unregistered trademark s gain. In contrast, Nywist and Bode, when they built on black a euro unregistered trademark s work, referred to negative feedback as that with the sign reversed. Black had trouble convincing others of the utility of his invention in part because confusion existed over basic matters of definition. Even prior to the terms being applied, James Clerk Maxwell had described several kinds of component motions associated with the centrifugal governors used in steam engines, distinguishing between those that lead to a continual increase in a disturbance or the amplitude of an oscillation, and those that lead to a decrease of the same. Conflicting definitions, the terms positive and negative feedback are defined in different ways within different disciplines. The altering of the gap between reference and actual values of a parameter based on whether the gap is widening or narrowing. The valence of the action or effect that alters the gap, based on whether it has a happy or unhappy emotional connotation to the recipient or observer. The two definitions may cause confusion, such as when an incentive is used to boost poor performance. Referring to definition 1, 
Some authors use alternative terms, replacing positive negative with self reinforcing self correcting, reinforcing balancing, discrepancy enhancing discrepancy reducing, or regenerative degenerative, respectively. And for definition 2, some authors advocate describing the action or effect as positive negative reinforcement or punishment rather than feedback. Yet even within a single discipline an example of feedback can be called either positive or negative, depending on how values are measured or referenced. This confusion may arise because feedback can be used for either informational or motivational purposes, and often has both a qualitative and a quantitative component. As Connellan and Zemke put it, quantitative feedback tells us how much and how many. Qualitative feedback tells us how good, bad or indifferent. Applications, biology, in biological systems such as organisms, ecosystems, or the biosphere, most parameters must stay under control within a narrow range around a certain optimal level under certain environmental conditions. The deviation of the optimal value of the controlled parameter can result from the changes in internal and external environments. A change of some of the environmental conditions may also require change of that range to change for the system to function. The value of the parameter to maintain is recorded by a reception system and conveyed to a regulation module via an information channel. An example of this is insulin oscillations. Biological systems contain many types of regulatory circuits, both positive and negative. As in other contexts, positive and negative do not imply consequences of the feedback have good or bad final effect. A negative feedback loop is one that tends to slow down a process, whereas the positive feedback loop tends to accelerate it. The mirror neurons are part of a social feedback system, when an observed action is mirrored by the brain a euro like a self-performed action. Feedback is also central to the operations of genes in gene regulatory networks. Repressor and activator proteins are used to create genetic operons, which were identified by Francois Jacob and Jacques Monod in 1961 as feedback loops. These feedback loops may be positive, or negative. On a larger scale, feedback can have a stabilizing effect on animal populations even when profoundly affected by external changes, although time lags in feedback response can give rise to predator-prey cycles. In zymology, feedback serves as regulation of activity of an enzyme by its direct product, S, or downstream metabolite, S, in the metabolic pathway. Hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal and gonadal axis is largely controlled by positive and negative feedback, much of which is still unknown. In psychology, the body receives a stimulus from the environment or internally that causes the release of hormones. Release of hormones then may cause more of those hormones to be released, causing a positive feedback loop. This cycle is also found in certain behavior. For example, Shame loops occur in people who blush easily. When they realize that they are blushing, they become even more embarrassed, which leads to further blushing, and so on. Climate science The climate system is characterized by strong positive and negative feedback loops between processes that affect the state of the atmosphere, ocean, and land. A simple example is the ice albedo positive feedback loop whereby melting snow exposes more dark ground which in turn absorbs heat and causes more snow to melt. Control theory Feedback is extensively used in control theory, using a variety of methods including state space, full state feedback, and so forth. Note that in the context of control theory, feedback is traditionally assumed to specify negative feedback. The most common general purpose controller using a control loop feedback mechanism is a proportional integral derivative controller. Heuristically, the terms of a PID controller can be interpreted as corresponding to time, the proportional term depends on the present error, the integral term on the accumulation of past errors, and the derivative term is a prediction of future error, based on current rate of change. Mechanical engineering In ancient times, the float valve was used to regulate the flow of water in Greek and Roman water clocks. Similar float valves are used to regulate fuel in a carburetor and also used to regulate tank water level in the flush toilet. The Dutch inventor Cornelius Drebbel built thermostats to control the temperature of chicken incubators and chemical furnaces. 
In 1745, the windmill was improved by blacksmith Edmund Lee, who added a fan tail to keep the face of the windmill pointing into the wind. In 1787, Thomas Mead regulated the rotation speed of a windmill by using a centrifugal pendulum to adjust the distance between the bedstone and the runner stone. The use of the centrifugal governor by James Watt in 1788 to regulate the speed of his steam engine was one factor leading to the Industrial Revolution. Steam engines also use float valves and pressure release valves as mechanical regulation devices. A mathematical analysis of Watt's governor was done by James Clerk Maxwell in 1868. The Great Eastern was one of the largest steamships of its time and employed a steam powered rudder with feedback mechanism designed in 1866 by J. McFarlane Gray. Joseph Farsot coined the word servo in 1873 to describe steam powered steering systems. Hydraulic servos were later used to position guns. Elmer Ambrose Sperry of the Sperry Corporation designed the first autopilot in 1912. Nicholas Minersky published a theoretical analysis of automatic ship steering in 1922 and described the PID controller. Internal combustion engines of the late 20th century employed mechanical feedback mechanisms such as the vacuum timing advance but mechanical feedback was replaced by electronic engine management systems once small, robust and powerful single-ship microcontrollers became affordable. Electronic engineering the use of feedback is widespread in the design of electronic amplifiers, oscillators, and logic circuit elements. Electronic feedback systems are also very commonly used to control mechanical, thermal and other physical processes. If the signal is inverted on its way around the control loop, the system is said to have negative feedback. Otherwise, the feedback is said to be positive. Negative feedback is often deliberately introduced to increase the stability and accuracy of a system by correcting unwanted changes. This scheme can fail if the input changes faster than the system can respond to it. When this happens, the lag in arrival of the correcting signal can result in overcorrection, causing the output to oscillate or hunt. While often an unwanted consequence of system behavior, this effect is used deliberately in electronic oscillators. Harry Nywist contributed the Nywist plot for assessing the stability of feedback systems. An easier assessment, but less general, is based upon gain margin and phase margin using bowed plots. Design to ensure stability often involves frequency compensation, one method of compensation being pole splitting. Electronic feedback loops are used to control the output of electronic devices, such as amplifiers. A feedback loop is created when all or some portion of the output is fed back to the input. A device is said to be operating open loop if no output feedback is being employed and closed loop if feedback is being used. Negative feedback loops, when the fed back output signal is out of phase with the input signal. This occurs when the fed back signal is anywhere from 90 a degree to 270 a degree with respect to the input signal. Negative feedback is generally used to correct output errors or to lower device output gain to a predetermined level. In feedback amplifiers, this correction is generally for waveform distortion reduction or to establish a specified gain level. A general expression for the gain of a negative feedback amplifier is the asymptotic gain model. Positive feedback loops, when the feedback signal is in phase with the input signal. Under certain gain conditions, Positive feedback reinforces the input signal to the point where the output of the device oscillates between its maximum and minimum possible states. Positive feedback may also introduce hysteresis into a circuit. This can cause the circuit to ignore small signals and respond only to large ones. It is sometimes used to eliminate noise from a digital signal. Under some circumstances, positive feedback may cause a device to latch, that is, to reach a condition in which the output is locked to its maximum or minimum state. The loud squeals that sometimes occurs in audio systems, PA systems, and rock music are known as audio feedback. If a microphone is in front of the loudspeaker that it is connected to, sound that the microphone picks up comes out of the speaker, and is picked up by the microphone and re-amplified. If the loop gain is sufficient, howling or squealing at the maximum power of the amplifier is possible. Software engineering and computing systems, 
feedback loops provide generic mechanisms for controlling the running, maintenance, and evolution of software and computing systems. Feedback loops are important models in the engineering of adaptive software, as they define the behavior of the interactions among the control elements over the adaptation process, to guarantee system properties at runtime. Feedback loops and foundations of control theory have been successfully applied to computing systems. In particular, they have been applied to the development of products such as IBM's Universal Database Server and IBM Tivoli. From a software perspective, the autonomic loop proposed by researchers of IBM is another valuable contribution to the application of feedback loops to the control of dynamic properties and the design and evolution of autonomic software systems. Social sciences, a feedback loop to control human behavior involves four distinct stages. Evidence. A behavior must be measured, captured, and data stored. Relevance. The information must be relayed to the individual, not in the raw data form and it was captured in, but in a context that makes it emotionally resonant. Consequence. The information must illuminate one or more paths ahead. Action. There must be a clear moment when the individual can recalibrate a behavior, make a choice, and act. Then that action is measured, and the feedback loop can run once more, every action stimulating new behaviors that inch the individual closer to their goals. Reflexive feedback, a sociological concept that states a feedback association is created within a certain relationship whereby the subject object that delivers a stimulus to a second subject object, receives the stimulus back in response. This first impulse is reflected back and forth repeatedly. Economics and finance, the stock market is an example of a system prone to oscillatory hunting, governed by positive and negative feedback resulting from cognitive and emotional factors among market participants. For example, when stocks are rising, the belief that further rises are probable gives investors an incentive to buy. But the increased price of the shares, and the knowledge that there must be a peak after which the market falls, ends up deterring buyers. Once the market begins to fall regularly, some investors may expect further losing days and refrain from buying, but others may buy because stocks become more and more of a bargain. George Soros used the word reflexivity to describe feedback in the financial markets and developed an investment theory based on this principle. The conventional economic equilibrium model of supply and demand supports only ideal linear negative feedback and was heavily criticized by Paul Merod in his book The Death of Economics, which, in turn, was criticized by traditional economists. This book was part of a change of perspective as economists started to recognize that chaos theory applied to nonlinear feedback systems including financial markets. World System Development the hyperbolic growth of the world population observed till the 1970s has recently been correlated to a nonlinear second order positive feedback between the demographic growth and technological development that can be spelled out as follows technological growth for euro increase in the carrying capacity of land for fiopli euro demographic growth for euro more fiopli euro more potential inventor so euro acceleration of technological growth for euro accelerating growth of the carrying capacity a euro the faster population growth for euro accelerating growth of the number of potential inventor so euro faster technological growth for euro hence the faster growth of the earth's carrying capacity for people and so on Education. In the majority of universities, teachers decide learning objectives and feedbacks to students. Learners have different conceptions of learning activities and preconceptions about hierarchy in education. Some may look up to instructors as experts in the field and take to heart most of the things instructors say. This is the subject of study in the field of formative feedback, or formative assessment. A different application of feedback in education is the system for continuous improvement of engineering curricula monitored by the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. Government. Examples of feedback in government are, legal system, elections, mass media, revolution, surveys, email administration. A mechanism to alert the purported sender of an email with information about the email. In organizations, as an organization seeks to improve its performance, feedback helps it to make required adjustments. 
feedback motivates many people in the workplace. People who receive negative or positive feedback must decide how to apply it to their job. Joseph Folkman says that to find the greatest level of success in an organization, working with other people, a person should learn how to accept any kind of feedback, analyze it in the most constructive manner possible, and use it to further impact future decision making. Sturman makes the point that the use of the term feedback in organizations can sometimes be misleading. In common parlance the term feedback has come to serve as a euphemism for criticizing others, as in the boss gave me feedback on my presentation. This use of feedback is not what we mean in system dynamics. Further, positive feedback does not mean praise, and negative feedback does not mean criticism. Positive feedback denotes a self-reinforcing process, and negative feedback denotes a self-correcting one. Telling someone your opinion does not constitute feedback unless they act on your suggestions and thus lead you to revise your view. Examples of feedback in organizations, financial audit, performance appraisal, shareholders meeting, marketing research, 360-degree feedback, walkout, lockout, in psychology, one application of feedback in psychology, education, and organizations is feedback intervention. Defined as actions taken by external agent, S, to provide information regarding some aspect, S, of one's task performance. Despite common beliefs that such feedback is typically effective, Kludger and Danissi reported a meta-analysis that showed that in 38% of the experiments published between 1905 and 1992, feedback caused a decline in performance. Moreover, the decline in performance was not related to whether the feedback was positive or negative. This result was explained with Higgins' regulatory focus theory. Specifically, Positive feedback seems to improve motivation and performance when people are promotion-focused whereas negative feedback improves performance when people are prevention-focused, see also. References Further reading, Katie Salm and Eric Zimmerman. Rules of Play. MIT Press. 2004. ISBN 0-262-24045-9. Chapter 18 Games as Cybernetic Systems. Coratel of A, Malkov A, Kalto Arena D. Introduction to Social Macrodynamics, Secular Cycles and Millennial Trends. Moscow, URSS, 2006. ISBN 5 484 0 DIJK, E, Kremer, DD, Mulder, LB, and Stoughton, J. How do we react to feedback in social dilemmas? In Beale, Eek, Garling and Gustafsson New Issues and Paradigms in Research on Social Dilemmas, New York, Springer, 2008.